Hi everyone, welcome back to our ongoing series on how to create a life operating system in Notion. Today is going to be a little different. It's one of our update videos where I go through a few changes that have happened to the system since the episodes that presented those different components. So periodically, in, as we go, I'm updating my system just as all of you are updating your systems. So I like to do a video that catches you up on the changes I've made. And then the second part of this video, I'm going to go in a little more depth on an element of the last video, the previous one, which we did on the content creation pipeline. Several of you had asked me for more detail on how I connect the content moving through the content creation pipeline to the action items database or the task database. So I'm going to more explicitly walk through how I link and track in parallel the tasks in the action items database with the content moving through the content creation pipeline. That'll be the second part. But before we get into that, I just wanted to give you a quick update that I made a video for the Keep Productive YouTube channel, Francesco's channel on all kinds of productivity and performance software. That video is now available, so you can check it out. I'll link to it below. It's also on my homepage. All, on my homepage, I always list all the videos that I appear on on other channels. So there's a playlist on the homepage of this YouTube channel that shows my appearances on Notion shows such as Office Hours and Notion at Work. I'll be doing another Notion at Work episode with William Nutt on, I believe, July 1st. So that'll be coming out, that'll be a live stream, and that'll be fun. That'll also be very focused on the vaults part of the system here. And it's been nice seeing a lot of new subscribers and visitors to our channel here from the Keep Productive video. So welcome to all of you and to all of you who are constantly coming in from, I don't even know how you're finding us. I think the YouTube algorithm has been treating us well, but our growth rate has been incredible. I intended to do a thank you video when we hit 5,000 and here we are like a week or two later and we've already passed 7.5 thousand subscribers. So blew away my ability to even react in a reasonable amount of time. So we're over 7.5 thousand at the point of recording this video and who knows where that'll go. But I just wanted to thank you guys because the community forming around this is incredible. Even for the level of videos we have, the amount of engagement and the level of comments and discussion happening, that just doesn't happen. This level of engagement is really unique and special. And that's completely attributable to you guys and your passion for learning and growing. And I just couldn't be more appreciative. So I just want to thank you for all that enthusiasm and engagement with the channel and the discussions we're having here. That's what is making this incredibly exciting for me and I know for a lot of you guys. So I'm really thrilled that a real community is forming around this channel and and to be at over 7,500 subscribers in about three months is just incredible. So thank you guys and uh, lots more to come to sort of build on top of that momentum. And finally, before we dive into the new updates, I just wanted to say I'm super active on Twitter and a lot of you are already engaging with me on Twitter. That's an avenue where we can have more organic and freeform conversations. Obviously in the comments below on YouTube, we can talk about the specific topic of each video, but on Twitter, we can open it up to anything. So feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm at August Bradley on Twitter and easy to find there. And I engage with everybody on any of the videos or just any topics on performance, life enhancement, software, anything that's of interest. Definitely uh, connect with me and reach out on Twitter. Let's just think of that as a platform in which we can continue the conversation that we start here. So let's jump into the updates in the system. And then at the end, I'll show you a little bit more detail on how I connect my content pipeline to my action items database. So here we are in the command center. Let me enlarge the text. A couple of things I just wanted to show you, nothing extreme. So down here we have the organizational structure. I've shown this before, but I have added the cycles in reviews folder. And I know I touched on this briefly. I have, you know, as we've discussed, Originally, the dashboards, pillars, pipelines, and vaults folders. I'll open them up so you can take a glance and freeze the video if you want to see what's actually in each of these in the vaults. But the new one is the cycle reviews. These previously were in some of the others, but it was getting a little bit too cluttered and too much packed into each one. And these are really a consistent category. So I created a separate category for the cycles and reviews. So if you haven't seen the videos on these, there is a video on each of these that goes in depth, but basically daily tracking is tracking and measuring our movement towards the things we've identified as priorities in our lives. And then weeks, months, quarters are the weekly, monthly, and quarterly reviews. There's a video on each of those. There's also an annual database. At the moment, I have that embedded inside the alignment zone. I'll probably move it into here now that I have this new category. That is the proper place to house all of the time period cycles. 
cycles. And this is really my organizational structure from the dashboards down to the cycle reviews. I've created a line here just to separate these two categories down here. Most of you won't have these, although if you wanted to, it's an option for you as well. In development are templates I'm experimenting with, templates that I've created that I use with clients, particularly team engagements and some unusual templates that aren't part of my system, but I often bring into client implementations and just experimentations and things that I'm trying out. And then public is where I put the templates that I share with you guys when you subscribe to the newsletter. There's a link below for that if you're interested. That's just a separate place to house it so that it's distinct from my main system organization. Then jumping from the alignment zone to the action zone, I usually use the favorite section up here to move to the most commonly accessed section. So set that up for your own preferences, but don't let it get too big. You'll notice my navigation column is not out of control. It's very well organized. You don't want that clutter just to overwhelm and make it hard to find things. You want it to feel organized and streamlined. So in the action zone, so this is a fairly small change, but I'm finding it to be extremely effective. I've added projects here to the toggle lineup. So we have a lineup here of the active projects. Now this is exactly the same as we had down at the bottom, but I'm finding that jumping in and out of projects is how I like to manage any of the action items that are tied to projects rather than engage with them as I used to in the today lineup, which I still do sometimes. And certainly I, this is the primary view for what I have to do each day. But if I'm going to mess around with and change priorities and active status, I really want to jump into a project and go down and work with the whole lineup. Now this is a short one, but some of them are a lot longer. And this lets me really see how they all interrelate and, and connect to each other. So having it here, as I see something in the today view, I will jump quickly into the project to make sure the changes I make are consistent with my whole vision for executing on the project. So merely having this toggle up here on the top and a toggle takes almost no space. So it's easy enough just to insert it there. To be able to pop that open right there is proving to be very effective. So I actually recommend that. And I've made that change in the template, but if you already have your action zone set up, just come down here, duplicate this, click here and go to duplicate. It'll make an exact copy of that. Duplicate one of these toggles, create a second toggle, open it up and then drag the one from the bottom up into here and it's all done, it's that easy. So definitely recommend that change. But while we're here in the today toggle, just wanted to mention there's a slight tweak to the system that was suggested and I picked up from one of our viewers, Patrice Lego. Hope I'm pronouncing that properly, but had the great idea that just as we add a little plus sign to the beginning of a series of dependent tasks. So if this were a dependent task, it's not, but if it were, we would put a little plus in front of it and that would indicate it has dependent task following it just so we know to update that as we complete this one. In the same way we do that, if we're going to add a recurring task, the new plan is to put an asterisk in front of it. So if there's an asterisk in front of it, that means it's a recurring task. Now I did a whole video on how I manage recurring tasks. So I'll refer to that video and I'll link to that below on how to manage recurring tasks. The little asterisk is an indication that that is one that is not to be checked off as done, but instead to be bounced to the next instance of that reoccurring task. And it's just sort of a little reminder that that's not something that's gonna be completed. It's just gonna be continually bumped to the next cycle whenever you complete it. I thought that was a great idea and I have now implemented it in the system that I use. Okay, so that's that with the updates in the action zone. I have a couple more that I'm not gonna do in this video that I'm saving for the next video because the next video I do is going to be specifically on database relations and rollups. I get a ton of questions on, first of all, just how to do database relations and rollups. So I'm going to do an introduction. I don't usually give instruction on how to do features, but that's one of the more advanced features and I rely on it so heavily. It's really not that complicated. I can explain it very simply and quickly. So in the next video, I'm going to do an introduction to the function of database relations and rollups. And in the process, show you several additions to the system since I did the videos on those different sections where I'm using new types of rollups. It's really not hard. It doesn't need to be this overwhelming or scary thing. And so that covers the updates I wanted to cover here. I wanted to dive back into our content production machine, which is the dashboard for content production and uses the production pipeline database. We did a whole video on this last time. So if you're just jumping in here and this is looking overwhelming, go back to the video on the content creation dashboard dashboard, but there's one key element to this I kind of glossed over and I just want to go into that a little bit more thoroughly. So opening the production pipeline Kanban board here, we can just jump into one of these content items. So just if you're new to this, this these are, each of these is an item of content that's being created and going through the different stages of creation. 
see the previous video to get more information on how that works. Opening one of them up, you'll see it is not linked to an action item, which is good because I wanted to show you how to do it. So I left that blank deliberately to show you how I would connect it to an action item or a task in my action items task database. It's really simple, which is why I didn't dive into it in great detail, but I don't wanna leave anything to be assumed, so I wanted to show you explicitly. So all you do is you click on the action item, which is the name of that database, and it may come up as an example here, but usually the action item database has so many things in it, it usually doesn't give you the recommendation you want, so you just start typing in some part of the name. It doesn't have to be the beginning of the name, but any word that you know is in it, and in some cases, you don't even know if it's in there, if you don't know if you've created that one or not. So offhand, I'm not sure, so I'm gonna type 24. So if it's in there, this is Notion video number 24, so the number 24 would be in if there is an action item created for it, but there isn't, so I'm just gonna create one. I'm going to type Notion video 24. And then down here, if it doesn't exist, just click create new page. And it will then create an item in the task database. Then you want to put in the few required elements. You just click onto it and you'll enter yourself if you're the owner, if you're sharing this with other people. For status, you'll make it active. You'll give it a due date, pick a date there, and you'll give it a priority. So second priority. All you really need to do is give it a status and a due date priority can be assigned the night before as is part of the routine with the system. Now we've added that and then going back to the content item, we now see that the action item is attached. And so this act action item is what's going to appear in your daily action zone today toggle when it's time to do the next part of working on this piece of content. So you've got the next action item date and then you've got the action item in your task database. Now it is automatically rolling up the due date for that task database action item. AI due date means action item due date. That is a roll up. And we're gonna do a whole video on roll ups next. So I'm not gonna explain how that works right now, but if you know what a roll up is, that's a roll up. And that's why we have this here. So we can see if the next, next action date is aligned with the due date of the task and it's not. So that means we need to change it. Well, it's super easy to change it. You can't click on that because that's rolling up automatically, but you just click on the action item itself, change it to the date you want, and you come back to the content item, and now they're the same. That's how you keep them in line. It's just super easy. You don't even have to go over to the action zone or the task database. You just click on the action item here, pop open the card right there, change it, do a back click, and you're back to the content and they're aligned. So if you're in the action item view, perhaps in the daily action zone, you'll also see the, a roll up on that end. So if we open this here, we down here have a, the content item that's connected. That's the direct relation. And then we have a roll up of the next action item date and the status date for that piece of content. I didn't enter either of these. From the content, we added the relational connection between the two databases. So this is automatically connected. And once this is connected, the next action date for that piece of content and the status production stage is rolled up automatically. So from either view, you see the date of the other. And in this case, you see the production status. So jumping back to the previous one, and that's how we keep it aligned. So if we were to jump over to the action zone now, the date we set was for tomorrow. So we'll click open tomorrow and we see Notion Video 24 entered right there. And in this view down here, we see the direct relational link to the content item. So if we were looking at it from this view and we wanted to jump into the content and see more detail about what's happening in that production piece, we just click through right here and then we're back there. So that is how we do it. We could add it from the action item base here. We could just click new, create a new one. It would be, let's say, Notion demo video sample. We could create a new content item just by going here. We could either connect it to one that exists. We could connect it to the number 25 here or type a new one to create it. If we just start typing, it's going to give us the opportunity to create a new one with whatever name we type, or we can link it to one that already exists. Say this is the next video. So I'll link that there. I just linked that to the next video that in rollups that's coming after this one. And automatically it brings in the next action date that is attached to that content item and the production status of that content item. We wanted to jump over there to work on it, we just click through. And now we're in that content item in the content and creation dashboard. So jumping back over to the content and creation dashboard, this is the one we just added the connection to. We're looking at it from this end and we've got the action item connected. Now this already had one connected, but I added a new one. So now it has two. Obviously we don't need to keep the demo. We can delete that. Typically you just have one connection and that's automatically rolling up the planned due date 
in the action item database. And it's the same as the planned next action item in this content creation pipeline. So that's how the two stay aligned. It's very easy. It is an extra step, but the extra step lets us have this entire siloed operation of content creation and the ability to look at all the content in pipeline form or in calendar form down here. This is the count next action calendar and this is the publishing calendar. Have this all isolated so you can just see content in motion through the system, that's really valuable. And you see, even though it is an extra step to keep it aligned with the action item database, it's extremely easy. You can manage either the action items from the content database, or you can manage the content items from the action items task database. So super simple, Notion gives you the ability to control either from either perspective. So there you go, not too complicated, but I wanted to tie that loose end off and answer some of the questions that came up after the last video. So I hope that's helpful. If that's still unclear, leave any questions below. Hope the updates were informative and useful to you. If you have any questions about those, of course, leave the comments below, happy to engage. And we'll continue adapting and building and improving the system as we go. The next video, as I said, will show a few more improvements to the system and also give an overview and introduction to the concept of relations between databases that's connecting entries in two different databases and rollups and how to bring a lot of information with you once you make one connection from one entry to another entry across two databases it brings all the information you want along with it automatically it's one of the best forms of automation in notion so a really powerful feature it's generally considered advanced but it's just not that hard to do so i wanted to give you a shortcut to understanding that that'll be the next video and then after that we'll do the vaults we'll get into the media vault the book vault and my personal favorite the knowledge lab so i'll show you how all of that comes together if this is of interest be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos leave thoughts or questions below and hit like if you found this valuable I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work super hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.